Who? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I don't remember any of it. Okay. So, you know, when I started acting school, I thought I was so cool. I got into NYU and I was going to be doing, you know, the two years of conservatory that they have you do where you're learning your craft, you're becoming a method actor. Three days a week you're at the conservatory, two days a week you are doing your academic classes. And when I was doing those vocal exercises around the house and stuff, you could not tell me nothing. I was an actor, I was learning my craft, I was cleansing my speech, my patterns, in order to be able to handle the dialogue of my character who might be from another place and, and another time who you know didn't necessarily talk like Tiffany from Brooklyn but you know maybe she's from the south maybe um she drags her s's in a certain way blah 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 so I was doing my vocal exercises all the time and you couldn't tell me nothing about it and my family was like what the heck is she doing and I remember my best friend she thought it was the funniest thing ever and she'd be like oh Tiff show them the 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 voice thing the voice thing it was stupid it was hilarious I mean not to say that 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 the voice exercises are stupid um but it's just a small glimpse into all of the, the, the kookiness that you do when you are um, in acting school and when you are learning method acting. There's a lot that goes into it. And I had no idea what I was signing up for. So in high school, you know, I had done a few little acting classes, commercial acting, um, you know, Doug deodorant, blah, 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 blah. Or improv class, uh, where you play fun games, things like that. It wasn't anything ever very serious and and rooted, so to speak, in, in intense technique. So by the time I got to NYU, I am in this drama program, which places you in conservatory three times a week doing method acting, I recognized, whoa, where am I? It was very intense and I was not expecting that. So method acting was pretty much um, pioneered by uh, Konstantin Stanislavski. He was a Russian actor and theater director and he created this sort of naturalistic technique of acting where you are the character, where it is a state of being and you are living this character and this life. It is not acting, you are being. And so part of that was, you know, cleansing your speech and, and getting a very generic um, accent going and part of that was also understanding how your body aligns with your emotions and all these things that are kind of layered together to prepare what is called your instrument you know just like a, a pianist plays their piano an actor your your whole being is your instrument and there were things about it that were fun, I'm not gonna lie, you know, Shakespeare class was fun, um, doing our, our vocal exercise and stuff was fun because it did help me learn about my voice and, and all of that. I don't know if I should probably maybe still be using some of those techniques, but I digress. There were cool things about it, but there were also really dark things about it and I don't necessarily think that you need method acting to get to that place. I just don't. 
And there's a lot of famous actors that do method acting. You know, De Niro and Brando and Pacino and all of these people, Meryl Streep, all, all of these people do method acting. A lot of the greats, right? Uh, but a lot of the greats have been very tortured people, not the happiest people. So I'm in acting school and the different conservatories stress different things um, because there, there are a few of them. You know, there's Adler, there's Strasbourg, whatever, you know, some one, you know, stresses more imagination work. The other one really stresses, you know, use that time that, you know, this person said this to you. Use that time that, you know, you were betrayed by that person. Use that time and just, this thing was really traumatic and just pull from it and pull from it and pull from it. And then, you know, there's just a lot of emotional work on both ends, no matter how you flip it, whether you're using your own situations and experiences and then building upon that with imagination work versus I'm just gonna go ahead and keep drawing from the same stale thing that I don't wanna keep reliving, but I'll keep reliving it for the sake of this scene and this career. Uh, either way you flip it, it, it's not healthy. It's just not. And while I'm in school and we're doing all of these different things and tapping into this and tapping into that and going deep there and there and this and that, I noticed something happening in me that I didn't really, I didn't like it. I didn't like it, not one bit. I started feeling really sad. I started feeling very anxious. I remember I'd be on the train and my leg would just keep tap, 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 tap. I just, I, I felt so, I was not in control of my emotions. I wasn't in control anymore. I just felt constantly just bogged down by, by different things and memories and it just felt really awful and that's what they do in acting school especially method acting you you are they want to strip everything away you know strip away your your everything your your guards your everything and the point is to to get to the rawness of you to then be able to use all of that vulnerability and all of that rawness to then create and live whatever character you need to create and live. And at the same time, I am in a terrible relationship and it was really a recipe for emotional, mental abuse. It was off, it was terrible terrible recipe and so not only is the technique itself destructive because you're opening yourself up to all of these things which also have things behind it um it happening in the supernatural in the, the unseen realm so that's happening because now you're opening all these doors teachers are also they get a rise out of this I found some of them to be really brutal they enjoyed this sort of edging on this sort of uh, poking and prodding I remember one of the teachers he was nice but there was a bit of a of a sadist sort of vibe to it you know he was our um he was our uh, technique teacher and so there was one exercise where we would sit in front of the class and he would we would 
discuss, you know, our character and what we were working on for our scene study class and, and, and the backstory for the character and who the character was and what they'd been through. Um, and he would just, but what else? Oh yeah, why? Did she lose the baby? Oh, and did her, so her dad died, huh? And he didn't tell her, huh? Or, sorry, not her, but you. He's saying you. Oh, and so the baby died. And then your dad, your dad, yeah. And you didn't get to tell him you loved him, huh? All these things. And, and when you would think that you're getting pushed enough, it would just go deeper and more and more and more until you're crying and bawling in front of the class. And it was awful, even though these circumstances weren't necessarily real. They started from a real emotion. They started from a real memory. And then, yeah, you build imagination, imaginative circumstances around it, but it still came, started from that place rooted in reality. And it, to build in that way, it, it was just crazy. There was another time when I just remember, you know, again, I'm in this relationship that wasn't very healthy for me. And I was supposed to be doing this scene and scene study class with, um, with a dude, he was nice and everything, but you know, the scene, it, you know, two lovers and, and we're on this mattress on the floor and I'm wearing, you know, little, you know, panties or whatever. And we start the scene and I'm, you know, cozied up with him. And this teacher, she was a work, piece of work. She was just looking like this. And she just looked so dismayed and we started the dialogue so you know a couple minutes in we're kind of just living living and you know in and not talking yet so finally we start the dialogue and I just remember I think it was his line and then I my line next so he started and then the minute I opened my mouth I just remember her being like stop just stop the scene really i don't know about you but i don't wake up you know in bed with my lover like that and she just she goes is this i mean is this how you really would be in bed with your with your partner with your with your lover i mean what is this and it just felt really humiliating and she said what's wrong with you and I, I said, you know, I just don't feel comfortable right now. And she's like, how could you say that? How could you say that? How, how do you think you're making your, your scene partner feel right now? And she just went in on me in front of the whole class. And it would have just been cool if maybe after the class she would have said, hey, you know, is everything okay? Um, you said you weren't comfortable, you know, it, it wasn't something that your scene partner did, it's something that you're going through, what, what's going on? But no, just because I wasn't being vulnerable enough at that moment and just kind of throwing caution to the wind and doing whatever, she was pissed at me. And that teacher always antagonized me because there was always something about all this method acting that made me really weirded out and uncomfortable. I didn't like, I didn't like, you know, feeling this way, you know, they want you so raw and so vulnerable that you're crying about everything, but then they also want you to empty yourself so that you can then fill yourself for whatever character you're playing. And all of these things just, it was just too much and, and it just didn't feel healthy. And, you know, there was another teacher that, you know, she would always get annoyed with me. She was the, the movement teacher. We had a movement class and we would do these crazy things. I remember one time I got whiplash because it was like, oh, roll, walk around, you know, like a, I don't even know how, we were walking around like something and 
she goes, and now, you know, a wind blew and then this and then that. And I just remember like pulling my head back and <laughs> it hurt so bad for like a month. Anyways, so she was just so uh, mean all the time. And she, I remember one time in front of the whole class, she's like, oh, you're always so slow. Why do you always have to be the last person to, you know, put your stuff away and get on the floor? Just forget about your stuff. Who cares? It's just stuff. Just throw your stuff and then get out on the floor. Okay. So not only am I doing all this emotional crap, um, I'm also getting yelled at, getting embarrassed. Um, it was just wild. Another time I remember we were doing this, tech, this uh, exercise where we were screaming at the wall. We just all had to just be screaming and screaming at the wall. Uh, there was a lot of stuff. Um, the method acting just never really resonated with me. And it wasn't until these last few years that I came to an understanding about why why it never really resonated why you know it always felt weird they would celebrate the people in my class who were the most tortured who were the most just came looking miserable you know the ones who who just always looked like they were falling apart oh my teachers they loved that and when i look at some of these actors who really are falling apart for these roles I just don't think that that's necessary, nor do I think that that's healthy. So when you're doing all this work, thinking about your emotions and bringing up all these old memories and doing all these things, you are summoning things in the atmosphere. This is not what we see there's so much more than what we see. There, there is the unseen supernatural realm around us that we neglect to recognize its power and significance in our world because everything that is happening in the unseen realm is what is ha dictates what is happening in the natural because at the end of the day we are souls in a body with a spirit this is more than just you know me there's more to me than what you can see and so we neglect to take that into account in our day-to-day -day lives and what is happening what is happening when you're bringing up all these old memories when you're creating all this madness in your head when you when when these teachers are are you know screaming at you and chastising you and poking you and you know teasing you there are things happening in the realms around you and they affect you king saul he was being disobedient and what ended up happening there was a breach whenever there's a breach there is an invitation to those unclean spirits, to those demons that are around us. So what ended up happening? There was an invitation. Now tormenting spirits, King Saul is getting tormented, 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 tormented. You know, they're doing this, they're doing this. Imagine when you're perfectly fine and all of a sudden a crazy thought comes into your head and you're like, oh, why am I even, oh, where did that even come from? Yeah, because there's things happening around you and sometimes they just pop in out of nowhere but what have you been watching what have you been listening to you know what type of uh, conversations have you been having you know that when you're doing these things uh, you're you're allowing access to unclean spirits to things happening in the the unseen realm that are saying oh hey you want to tap into all this old junk all right cool let's do this 
And before you know it, you're getting tormented. Who are you getting tormented by? You know, there's always this thing of, oh, you know, such a tortured, tortured soul, tortured artist. What are you opening yourself up to? What are you opening yourself up to is the question. Because the unseen is so much realer than what we're seeing with our natural eyes. It's wild. There's an article called The Madness of Method Acting. Does acting need to be grueling to be good? In tying an actor's soul into the work, the method created a theater that could feel breathlessly real to audiences. So tying the actor's soul into the work. For the actor, it turned craft into a spiritual calling and the self into an instrument to be used, mind, turned inside out in the name of performance. A type of transformation that can be awe-inspiring to behold, but is easily exploited. When you hear something like that, clearly there is a recognition of this method tapping into the soul but is it even worth it you look at philip seymour hoffman in an article in the new yorker it says the connection of his inner life and outer skill generated a sort of emotional short circuit that overheated him terrifyingly resulting in the justly admired intensity that he brought to every role which was also, however, a sign of an actor giving more of himself moment by moment than an actor should ever be called upon or need to give. And we know what happened. Unfortunately, this great actor, he ended up overdosing. Heath Ledger, oh, he was so cute. He said in a New York Times article, that the role of the Joker caused intense insomnia. He said, last week, I probably slept an average of two hours a night. I couldn't stop thinking. My body was exhausted and my mind was still going. Unfortunately, um, had an accidental drug overdose. He was on tons of medication for all these different things you know, the sleep, the anxiety, the, all this stuff. He lost his life way too early, going so hard and, and, and taking on this role to such an extreme. All that torment happening. And they don't even realize, they don't even realize the doors that they're opening, the things that they're inviting into their souls. And then this also extends to casting crew because a lot of times if you're not breaking character, you're not being very pleasant to the people around you that you have to work with on these phones for months at a time. And there are a lot of people who are known to be a bit psychotic on set. In a movie called My Left Foot, he refused to get out of his wheelchair and so he had to be rolled around on set and he required to be spoon-fed. When they shout cut, I could be myself. I don't have to continue being living in this delusion. And why? why? This is just not healthy. It's ridiculous. So, you know, I... That has been my experience with method acting and at the end of the day, it is acting. No matter what, you are lying. It is pretend. You can try to make it as real as you want and this whole being, being, being. You could do that as much as you want, but everybody knows you're lying, you're acting. Um, but the, the biggest point that I want to drive home is that when you're doing all of these things, opening, opening, opening yourself up to God knows what, well, I know what. You're, you're opening yourself up to all these things 
that will drive you mental. They will drive you crazy. For we wrestle against not flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual wickedness, host of wickedness actually, in the heavenly places. So yeah, you're opening yourself up to stuff. You're opening yourself up to the unseen. You're allowing for a breach and you're saying, come on in. All this depression and sadness and kookiness and tormenting and craziness and come on in. And then when you're done shooting, you're, everybody else is going home. They're going to go start editing. You're done with this character. No, you're not done with this character because you're taking all of your little friends with you. They're not just going to leave just like that. You're taking them with you. So what, do you, what, are, what are some of these people doing? They're doing drugs and they're taking tons of medication to, to, to deal with all of this. So method acting, yeah. I left school with a lot of student loan debt uh, for them to, to, you know, try to break me. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Do I regret it? No, I don't regret it because this is life. You live, you learn. Oh, let me try to find my light. Once those two years were done, things definitely got better in terms of my acting program because then I had more uh, autonomy over my schedule and I could choose what type of acting classes I wanted to take. And I did not take any more method.